oh, I never thought it would become a book. I still don't think it could become a book. It hasn't quite set in. Um, but I think I had an eighth grade project that was this cumulative thing at my arts middle school and I was required to do something, you know, out of the box and I decided to take all these stories I had been collecting and put them together with a stronger narrative and so that's how the book came to be. I did most of the writing when I was in middle school and I didn't have many friends and that was like a great way to spend my time instead of with other people, like a, like a normal person. My English teacher liked the book and she asked me to read a couple of stories at graduation, uh, which I did and my parents were in the audience and it had been the first time they, they saw the extent of the book and they were surprised. My dad was like, you know, oh, she's not a total idiot. <laughs> um, and he, he thought that the book could be worked on, so we sat together for a long time and he helped me go over the stories and create just a stronger, a stronger story arc. So the title of the book refers to a story within the book, uh, which is about me drowning a baby. Not, not I don't kill it, but a sort of partial drowning of a baby. And I'm trying to float in the scene, and I just thought that was sort of not a, a good metaphor for how I am the rest of the book, where I'm just sort of trying to, to keep you know, myself out of the deep end. The process of deciding which stories to include was definitely one that involved my entire family. We would sit around the kitchen table and we would go over you know, if they thought the stories were funny, if they were worth keeping in. I think that growing up surrounded by all of these creative people, I was allowed to have the freedom that I needed um, in expressing myself and just in general I go to an arts high school and that's also something that came out of being around the people in the Chelsea Hotel.